we now return to Walk with the Wolves. As a member of the CSU Pueblo baseball team, life has been relatively tranquil for Bodacious Ball since returning to the United States, but a 15-month experience in Afghanistan has taught him more life lessons than any of us could ever fathom. He was an Army engineer. He was driving a Husky truck that's sole intention was to seek out improvised explosive devices. Bodacious has been through more in life than any of us can imagine, but has quite the story to tell through his experiences. You have to give him that respect because of what he's done for our country and, you know, what he's brought to our program. So I think it's just more of uh, in toughness, as I talked to our kids about Jackie yesterday, about how tough he was. And that's what you get out of Bodacious. He's tough. And our game is about toughness. There's no question. I was a Husky driver. Um, I've been blown up a few times. Um, it's been... That was a rough haul in itself, and uh, I tip my hat to anyone who, who is a Husky driver. It's, uh, it's an admirable thing to do. How do you put yourself in a position to want to wanna be driving uh, a machine that really is out to make sure that IEDs and explosive devices aren't on the road? It's, it's really up to you to ensure that that road's gonna be safe, but of course somebody has to do it. Why you? So I, I just kind of stepped up and took initiative into uh, being that person to lessen the burden of being either hit more or being out front. How do you get comfortable driving on a freeway in, in downtown Pueblo, things that we take for granted, but at what point do you stop your peripheral vision from being paranoid at, at every piece of garbage in the road, at every unattended box on the corner. How do you get past that? I don't really. Uh, if you look out here in Pueblo, it's kind of a desert, right? Um, if I see something really weird inside the road, usually I'll pull over and see what it is. Um, something really peculiar, then uh, hopefully I'll kind of like slow down, kind of, and then go by it. And yeah, that's kind of what I've done. Uh, I don't really see anybody really over that, and besides just trying to drive by, I'll still keep looking. You mentioned perspective. When does that perspective really hit you? When, when you're walking around a college campus where really no one understands what you've seen, what you've experienced, what you've done? They call this uh, the city, the city of heroes. Um, I've got a good friend uh, named Clayson. His uncle is Drew Dix. He's a Medal of Honor winner. So that and going downtown and seeing his statue and stuff just kind of pushes you through that there's a lot of veterans in the area. Mm -hmm. And um, I see a lot of them that are successful. And it pushes me to be just as successful or more. How do you really articulate a life experience like you've gone through? You don't. You kind of just, kind of just go about your day and... Um, just kind of keep people in the dark, I guess, in a sense. Um, I don't know, for me, it's not really anyone else's business about mine. Um, besides, like, my daily life, if they ask me if I play on the baseball team, I'm like, yeah, I play for uh, CSUP, I'm on the baseball team. But I don't really like, like, yeah, you know, I did four years in the Army, um, it was a heck of an experience. I don't, I don't really do that. Yeah. I just kind of tell them in the now. The, the coping mechanism that comes with loss, You've done a brilliant job showcasing through art, through through tattoos. When, when did you, you really make that decision that I want to memorialize the people in my life and not just make them part of a conversation, but part of a reminder of who they are and what they've been able to influence in my life? Often, I think of those who have, who have passed away in my life. Recently, I've, I've lost a couple high school friends, actually. Um, kind of freak accidents. Um, I had one die in a car wreck a couple months ago. I had one that just drowned. They're out of the lake or something, swerved off the road. She got caught in her car. My seatbelt held her in the car and she drowned. Um, and then other friends and stuff that have passed away in the army. And uh, I've kept them, I've kept them with me. They're, up, they're on my arm. You gotta live the rest of your life when you come back from, from, from war. When, when you're not talking with other people about it. How, how does it change the way you look at life when, when you return and it's like, all right, well, just go ahead and uh, live a normal existence, go get a job, do your thing, and you've spent 15 months in a war zone being blown up. I heard heard this during 
my time in service is that nothing's greater than the heart of a volunteer. And if you think about that, um, it's very moving in the sense that someone's there because they chose to be there, not because they have to. We, we talk about the support aspect of it and that you've got to you got to come back from PTSD and, and, and have people around you. Well, I mean, that, that's why team is such a, a huge word in our vocabulary that you've got to have people who understand what you're doing, what, what you've gone through. How has that team culture really assisted you since returning four years ago? As I've been here at Colorado State University of Pueblo, the baseball team here has become my family. Uh, and I mean that in the sense that, you know, some people might be like, yeah, yeah, they're my family, so and so forth, but they really are to me. Um, it's more than a game for me. Um, it's kept me moving throughout my life. Uh, I really leave my heart on the field whenever I play, and I'm always there for my teammates. I pick them up whenever they've fallen, because um, this is a game. This is a game of mistakes and errors. You learn from them. Uh, and with that being said, I like being that person in the background that's either there to help them hit ground balls, throw BP to them, or uh, being part of the scene on the mound and contributing. What, what kind of camaraderie outside of family has this created for you with, with guys that you didn't even know, didn't even know existed, and now all of a sudden you're, you're bound together by baseball and, and have really established a friendship because of it. At school, school for me is really hard, like I had said before. And not that it's always been, but college has been. And baseball and my baseball family helped me to push myself on both sides of the working line, here and um, in the classroom. And I think that's what really pushes me to become a better player and a better student. When you look at the, the next stage in your life and how baseball and the support staff in Pueblo has, has really prepared you to e even find more success, what, what has it taught you about finding success and accomplishment and not having to do it in this traditional A, B, C manner? However you get there, that's your own story, that's your own road. I would have to say, if you start something, you finish it. Um, if you see something you want, you go for it. Um, whether it's near or far, your limitations are bound by yourself and not by others around you. So, for example, I could have went back to Washington to play baseball. I could have went to school back there, see some of the friends I grew up with. But I chose to come out here because I felt like there's a better opportunity for me. With that opportunity of being out here and not going back to Washington, I have a narrower view. I'm getting all the things I want to get done without being drawn back by outside influences. You know, friends that want to go hang out that I've known forever or anything. And then starting out here new, meeting new people. I know my friends in Washington will always be there because right, they've been there for years. But it's always nice to meet new people and to start new relationships with people. So, so with that being said, um, I don't know, Pueblo's became my home, in a sense.